I want to welcome everyone. I'm Paula Bartholomew, the Director of Online Events, and we're just delighted that you've tuned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni. You know, we've had so many Hawthorne graduate presentations. They're just fantastic. So I hope you'll explore our archived webinars on our website and view those too. And if you're listening for the first time, I want to let you know that All About Alumni is a platform to show our Hawthorne grads who will be sharing their post-grad activities and accomplishments. I just think the many ways that they're using their Hawthorne education and their practices is nothing short of amazing. We have a variety of degree and certificate programs at Hawthorne, and, and some of them are for those that are pursuing a clinical track with a goal of working directly with clients, and other programs are dedicated to those that are primarily wanting to educate with in such ways as writing books, developing courses, workshops, programs, doing public speaking or teaching for a school. And then we have other programs also for those who simply want to learn valuable, credible information in a conducive environment. The success of our students is a testament of Hawthorne's mission and principles to provide quality and affordable holistic health and nutrition education because we love to learn more at Hawthorne. So, Speaking more of learning more at Hawthorne, I have some big news that is really my honor to share. <laughs> because we're pleased to announce that Hawthorne University has been accredited by the Distance Education Accrediting Commission, that's the DEAC, one of the top accrediting agencies in the nation. And I sh this is just such an important milestone in the continuing growth and success of our university because Accreditation is a reliable indicator of the value and the quality of the education that an institution offers. So in receiving this grant of accreditation, Hawthorne's demonstrated its commitment to educational standards, to ethical business practices that assure quality, accountability, and improvement in higher education. And the scope of Hawthorne's accreditation extends to all of our degree programs, and we have a Doctor of Science and three Master's programs, and all of our certificate programs, and we have four of those. For full details on our programs, please visit our website, and um, a lot of details on that for there. So I just want to say how giddy I am, how very happy we all are to share this important accomplishment with you, and I welcome you to share it with others broadly. <laughs> we want everybody to know. All right. So let's turn our attention to today. We have our graduate, Jill Mirande, and she's going to be sharing her post-grad professional experiences with her presentation, My Journey Toward My Specialty, Nutritional Guidance for Youth with Anxiety, Mood, and Behavioral Issues. And we'll hear about Jill's experiences as she shares her professional developments after graduating from Hawthorne, including how she's developing her practice by defining and refining her business model and her specialty, as well as the unique services she offers. Jill's also going to discuss her marketing strategies and will explain the value she finds for her business development through the strategic partnerships that she's developing. And she's going to close with how she intends to continue to grow her business. And while I have the pleasure of interviewing Jill, you'll have the opportunity to ask her direct, direct uh, questions directly too. So I don't want you to hold back, simply post a question or a comment to the question panel. And I want to let you know that we're recording this too and it'll be posted to our website in just a few days. So with that, I'm excited to welcome you, Jill. Thank you, Paula. I'm so happy to be here. I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled to be showcasing you here today, Jill. And it's my pleasure to introduce you and have you share some of your story. So Jill Mirande is a holistic nutritionist practicing in the Portland, Oregon, Portland, Oregon area. She holds a Master of Science in Holistic Nutrition degree from Hawthorne University, as well as a BA in Psychology from the University of Puget Sound. Jill enjoys educating her clients on the connection between a nutrient-dense whole food-based diet and their well-being. She focuses on balance, variety, and moderation, and believes that eating well is a lifestyle, not a diet. Jill's passion is helping others attain optimal health and the chance to live their best lives. She enjoys inspiring and motivating her clients to make favorable changes to both their long-term eating habits and lifestyle patterns and witnessing the positive results. That's the best part. <laughs> she honors each person's biochemical individuality and is aware that no one dietary system is best for everyone. And while Jill works with a variety of individuals, she specializes in children and adolescents suffering from anxiety. 
and more details about her background and philosophy can be found well here today but also at jillmirande.com all right jill we're so pleased to have you with us all of you with us today and hearing jill's story jill are you ready i am ready thank you absolutely let's jump right in then and um Let's begin with you telling us a little bit about your background and what led you to a career in nutrition. Sure. So um, like many students at Hawthorne, I was drawn into the nutrition world because of my own health struggles. Um, so I had about a, a decade long battle with Lyme disease and I had some co-infections as well, Babesia and Bartonella. So um, that basically ended my, my working career. Uh, in, in the working world. I worked in human resources for um, a couple of high-tech companies and at Nike. And I became so ill that I wasn't able to hold down a regular job. Um, I was pretty much bedridden on and off um, for the first four years. And then I was finally diagnosed four years in. Um, so the treatment was quite lengthy and um, obviously resulted in a lot of GI issues from all of the antibiotic treatment that I had to go through. So that kind of forced me to learn about nutrition to, you know, heal myself. Um, and I really became so interested in it as time passed that I decided, gosh, I really think I want to study this formally so I can help other people. Um, I, I really, you know, I'm the type that likes to spread love and happiness. So I really wanted to um, help other people feel their best, and live their best life. Great. Um, you know, Jill, I always think that it's really interesting um, to me how students discover and choose Hawthorne University. So um, would you um, talk to us a little bit about that, how you found us and how you opened Hawthorne Store? Yes, absolutely. Um, to be honest, it was actually a little bit stressful finding the particular program that I wanted. Um, since there's not a single board that governs non-RD nutritionists, uh -huh. I thought it was really kind of confusing because I didn't really know where to go for my information. So I did a lot of research on the internet and I um, So what I did is I looked into each of the schools that they had listed on their website as meeting their educational standards. So after kind of searching um, the websites of all of those schools, I whittled it down to Hawthorne and Bauman College. And then what I did, because I was so overwhelmed, I thought, you know, I think I'm gonna call some graduates. Each mm -hmm. of the schools um, offered a list of, of graduates that were willing to have their name out there. So I called a few gra graduates from each program, and I was actually flabbergasted to learn that of the, Bauman graduates that I called, none of them were actually working as uh, nutritionists. Um, you know, yeah, it, it really amazed me. Some were like, you know, yoga instructors or things like that. So I think they probably were utilizing uh, that knowledge, but not as a nutritionist per se, um, which kind of made me think maybe they weren't fully prepared. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, the several um, grads that I talked to from Hawthorne were doing some really cool things. So they, they sounded prepared, which that made it kind of a slam dunk for me. Um, so I thankfully decided to choose Hawthorne. Um, and some of the other things that went into my decision making process was that I decided I really wanted the credibility of a master's degree. Um, because a lot of people still, even today, are somewhat biased if you're not an RD, a registered dietitian. I knew that I wanted kind of instant street cred, if you will, by saying, you know, I have a master's degree in nutrition. Um, I also like the flexibility of an online program. And uh, my philosophy was in line with uh, Hawthorne's. Uh, you know, it's a science-based program. Um, they focus on biochemical individuality and whole foods. That's very much in line with how I think. It's obviously very well respected. And I really loved that all of the professors in the master's program were either, well, most of them were actually nat naturopaths. Um, and then there, I had one instructor that was a PhD and one that was an MD. So that was very, very impressive to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important to have um, 
faculty that are well versed in the field and have their own practices that can lend their experience as well. So, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I think it'd be a good time for you to tell us a little bit about your experience while you were at Hawthorne. Well, I I absolutely loved it. Um, but having said that, it still took me five years to graduate, which is a little bit embarrassing to say that it took that long. Um, but because of my health history, I'm really intentional about managing my stress to be sure I don't relapse. Um, I do have some lingering symptoms from Lyme, um, but if I manage my life um, appropriately, I do very, very well. Um, and then, you know, not too far into my studies, my brother actually passed away unexpectedly. So that made me very aware that life is really short. Mm -hmm. And I did not want to have my nose in a book and be stressed out to try to get it done as fast as I possibly could. Um, I knew that going slowly um, was still stressful, but it was definitely more manageable. And I believe that it really did increase my absorption of the material. And I was able to um, really ma uh, make the time to delve into sidebar learning opportunities. Yeah. Um, and so I really, you know, in that five years, I learned more than I ever thought possible. Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm a sciencey or a, a book smart person, but Hawthorne really made it uh, approachable and doable for me. Um, and really surprisingly for me, um, the business and marketing course was a highlight. I, I never expected to enjoy it as much as I did. And I learned so much from that. And that has actually helped me so much in setting up my practice. Um, so kind of what it, what it taught me was that it's, it's, it, you need to have a specialty, um, because it's, it's difficult, if not impossible to be everything to everyone. And, you know, in our industry, things are changing, new information, new studies are coming out, you know, every day. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier to stay current um, on the data if you, you know, focus on one or two or even three specialties. Um, and you're also an expert in your field and people want an expert. When they have an issue, they don't necessarily want to go to a generalist. They want to go to the person that this is what they do all day, every day. Um, and then also having specialty really does refine your marketing strategy. So you, I remember reading something in this marketing course that when, I think it was the, the main textbook, I can't remember what it's called, but, you know, instead of spraying bullets all over as you're marketing, you're able to just, you know, aim right at the target. And so mm -hmm. it makes it a lot more effective. Beautifully said, Jill. I think that it's, um, it's, it's essential to have a business and marketing course. It's one thing to, to learn the craft. Uh, um, to, to be a professional, it's another thing to to run a business behind it. Absolutely. And, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm 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 thrilled that um, you're here to talk a little bit more about that today. And you know, I think we can move on to you know let let's stay with this business and marketing course for a little bit because you're saying that it really helped you develop your practice. So let's expand on that a little bit more. Yes, absolutely. So it really uh, helped me figure out that my thesis actually could and really should lead into my specialty. It seems so obvious, but at the time it just, um, it, it didn't really sink into me and I had a really hard time choosing my thesis. And then, you know, I was doing this business course and I thought, ding, 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 you know, I need to have my thesis be something that's going to lead me into my specialty. So, um, you know, when I kind of was going through the motions of choosing what I wanted my thesis to be, I thought ahead to what I wanted my practice to be. So I factored in my interests, which mental health has always been an interest of mine. Um, and then I just kind of blended that with my love for kids. And I also looked at the needs of my community. Uh, you know, 30% of kids and teens uh, suffer from anxiety, which is a staggering it's shocking to me that that many of our kids are feeling stressed out. Mm -hmm. um, and having said that, there is nobody in the area, in my area, I live in the Portland, Oregon area, um, who specializes in this condition. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I basically, this was a decision based on my interest, but also it was a business dis decision in that I knew there would be a client base waiting for me um, because there were a lot of children, there are a lot of children dealing with this, but there's really not, buddy, not anybody out there that is, you know, making this their focus. 
Beautiful. So I developed to be able to identify that. Yes. Yeah. I just it, I kind of backed into it and it and, and it's working out great. Beautiful. Well, you brought up your thesis. I, <laughs> it's it's always a big thing. I mean, when you do go through a master's program and you complete a thesis, you do emerge as an expert on, on this topic. So let's talk a little bit more about your thesis. Yeah. So so I I already mentioned that I have an interest in mental health. Um, personally, I am a, an anxious person. Um, my brother suffered from anxiety as well, um, and so I kind of thought that that this maybe would be, you know, a good way to honor him. Um, in addition to, uh, you know, when you're focusing on something that you know personally, it, it makes you more effective because you understand you can relate to your clients on a different level. So sure. that, you know, seemed like a logical um, thing for me. So, um, you know, we know that pharmaceutical meds are prescribed today at a, just a shocking rate. Um, and, you know, they're, they're throwing them at kids like it's just no big deal. But we just really don't know the, all of the implications of these medications on the development of our kids. So I really wanted to address this and offer a healthier first line treatment modality. Um, not to say that some people don't need meds, because I believe that some probably do. Um, but I, I am bothered by the fact that a lot of doctors give medication as the first try. They don't think to say, let's focus on your nutrition. Um, because there are a lot of studies out there that show that food can very much affect um, not only anxiety, but you know, overall well-being mood. We know that the, the gut is your, your second brain. So, um, so really my thesis was um, looking at dietary modifications as a first line treatment modality for anxiety disorders. So I focused on two main principles, the first of which was reducing consumption of refined foods, uh, which will logically um, lead to increasing consumption of whole foods at the same time. And then I looked at the five most common nutrient, nutrient deficiencies in children and teens with anxiety. Uh, so you'll see those listed there, omega-3 fatty acids, magnesium, B vitamins, zinc, and vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Plus, I love this, just keep calm, it's just a thesis. <laughs> oh my gosh, I showed that to my husband and said, do you <laughs> think that I should have had that on the wall when I was writing my thesis? Because I was me with anxiety. I was so stressed out. <laughs> if yes. I had seen that, it would have made, made me chuckle a little bit. <laughs> it made me chuckle to see it and um you know it, it's it, it's a stressful thing i mean first of all picking your topic when you narrow it down you have so many interests and so many things you've been learning but you you refined it really well here and i think we can stay on this point a little bit because obviously you're using your thesis and your practice so talk about how you used it as a jumping off point for your for your business yeah, so I already had figured out that I should have a specialty. We've talked about that. So obviously, I knew that my thesis was going to lead me into that niche. So um, this is sort of what I um, what I am doing now. Um, this is the tagline from the first page of my website: um, nutritional education and guidance for families, um, helping kids and adolescents with anxiety, mood, and behavioral disorders through food. So you'll see that I expanded my specialty beyond my thesis um, to include mood and behavioral disorders mm -hmm. because it's often the case that if one child has, in a family has an issue, his or her sibling may as well, uh, although it might manifest differently. So let's say an older sister has anxiety, her younger brother may very well have ADHD, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, in addition, um, the recs that I would make uh, for these, let's say, two conditions, if you will, would really be similar. Um, you know, I would eliminate refined foods like sugar, sweeteners, preservatives, additives, dyes. Um, I would ask them to increase their intake of veggies and fruits and healthy fats. Um, and so it makes sense to treat not just one single child, but the whole family. In addition, it makes it a whole lot easier on the parent or parents if everybody's on the same eating plan, um, and it's you know it stands to reason that that addressing the whole family really is going to be helpful for everybody. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I think one of the components here that uh, in terms of anxiety, especially with children, and you look at the amount of refined foods that are being consumed and the, the, the level of sugar that's being taken in on a daily basis, as well, couple that with the device time that they have, screen time. Oh, gosh, um, that's a whole other issue. Yes. But you know, Absolutely. it's, it's also unrecognized. You know, it's like, let's just give you medication as opposed to addressing the core factors that are leading to the anxiety in the first place. So thank you for, for, for addressing this very, very important issue with our children. So thesis to your specialty, let's talk about your business model that you followed as you were initially developing your practice. Yes. So, um, excuse me one second, my, my screen is, there we go. Um, so getting there was definitely a process, um, but I, I thankfully worked with a logo and website graphic designer who specializes in people who provide a service. So it really was a perfect fit. And she also really, to me, was kind of a, or is a business advisor. Um, she's, you know, sees people setting up businesses such as this all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so she helped me kind of re refine, um, uh, you know, my brain was all over the map. So she sort of helped me hone in on what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll explain a bit more about the actual website development process. We can talk about that later, but okay. as we were hashing that out, like what, how to do my website, my business model just kind of naturally was born. Mm -hmm. Um, so I knew I wanted to educate in, and counsel clients one on one, so that's where we started. Um, so you'll see right at you know at the top um, bullet point. Um, really, what what I do is is mostly one on one. It would be like nutritional education for my client, emotional support. Um, I offer grocery store tours, which I love so much. I can't even tell you. Um, I offer recipes and in home cooking. Um, you know, for example, I have one client that was just kind of overwhelmed and didn't know where to start. So I went in, one of the appointments she had was, um, we just basically cooked. We made like a, a really good hearty soup with bone broth. We did a um, homemade almond butter and what else? Oh, we made hummus. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really fun. You know, you don't have to be a chef to do that. I just kind of showed her what I do at home. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy that as well. And then I offer virtual sessions if somebody does not live in, in my area you know, we can meet over Skype or, you know, um, there are a, a lot of really cool programs that you can use to have a virtual session, whether you need to see, you would like to see their face or just want to have a phone, phone chat, that's fine too. Um, and, oh, sorry, were you going to say something, Paula? No, I was going to interject that it is, um, I think it's a really um, unique feature at, at Hawthorne in terms of schools that teach nutrition is that we encourage you to, to cook and <laughs> to know how yes. to cook. There's a right. recipe of the course for a reason in yes. every single course of the program so that you're practicing, you're developing skills at this. And, you know, going and doing grocery store tours, you know, people think it's a simple thing, but I think it's like walking into the world of an encyclopedia of, um, <laughs> of the, the, the plethora of, of, of information and, and things that you have to talk about in there that it can be very life changing. So I just wanted to bring that up about the recipe of the course and, and that I don't know any other program that, that um, requires that. That's a very good point. Yeah, I love that. Um, so let's see, moving on to the second bullet point. So um, I offer actually packages instead of hourly appointments. So um, my graphic artist that I have already mentioned, she uh, thought that I should read a book called Breaking the Time Barrier, and it was very eye-opening. Um, it, it kind of rocked my world, to be honest. So their premise is that it's best to charge a fixed fee that represents the, your value to your clients as opposed to the time you spend with them. So it, it took me a while to wrap my brain around this, but two different people told me that this is sort of the, the wave of, of the future in, in our industry. Mm -hmm. um, another benefit of this concept is that, you know, new information can be really overwhelming and change is hard. So often clients come in and you give them some things to work on and then you, you don't see them for a while. So they're hopefully at home working on what you discussed, but they may be kind of overwhelmed and think they're doing, quote, enough. 
but it likely isn't enough to elicit the change they were expecting or hoping. Um, but if you if you offer them a package instead, they're going to be motivated to come back and you'll be there to support them to get them over the hump. And this is going to really do a better job um, of creating lasting change. So they're going to be successful, which has in turn made you successful. And then they're going to be more likely to refer other people to you. I, it's so true. And I think it really um, distinguishes you um, from coaches and, you know, have a very different scope of practice there. So very That's well a very put together. Point. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Um, and then, so let's see my business. Okay. So the other thing that I do, um, I have a couple of additional revenue streams. There are a lot more than this, but this is just what I'm doing right now. So I have an online dispensary with the, I've chosen to go with Wellevate. I know that natural partners has one, um, as well called NP script. So I am, uh, you know, a fan of supplements when necessary. So I'm able to offer, you know, an online platform for my clients to purchase supplements at a really good um, rate. I, I offer a bit of a discount. Um, so that's uh, very convenient for them. They can just log on and order, you know, at their leisure. Mm -hmm. And then I, th I had never heard of an affiliate account before. I feel a little bit dumb. Um, I don't even know how I discovered it, but I offer uh, on my, on my web page, I have a resources page and, um, so I put things on there that I am a fan of and, um, you know, let's say a crock pot on Amazon. So if somebody links through my website to Amazon to buy this crock pot, I make a residual fee. Um, and simil similarly, I have uh, accounts set up with Thrive Market, Imperfect Produce and Dry Farm Wines, and theirs is a little bit different. Like if you if somebody signs up for their program, I think they kick back, you know, let's say $10 per person or a small percentage of the, their, their lifetime purchases. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a way to just have kind of um, easy money that you actually, to be honest, don't even have to think about. It's very passive income, right? And yes. you have, 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 how many crock pots have you been <laughs> gifted with from, from companies that are pleased to have you? <laughs> actually, <laughs> none. <laughs> But I've gone through a couple crock pots because I sure love ours. <laughs> I, I, I think bloggers really. Um, yeah, that's probably true. Do that, do that flow in a lot, a lot more. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. So um, you you mentioned you had other services. Let's go into that and yes. um, services that you offer and how you're actually working with your clients. Yeah. So I um, I've set up three different packages. So that gives a little bit of variety, but it's not overwhelming. Um, so you'll see um, the first one I offer is called the Nutrition Navigator. So it's a set of just three fixed sessions. So the first one, I actually visit the home. Sometimes they come to the office because oftentimes parents of teens, um, they, depending on the, the kid, of course, they seem to do better when they come to an official office because I think they maybe take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do like to visit the home when I can because you really learn a lot more and then you're able to meet everybody that's there. Um, so that first one is generally a home exploration. Um, and then the second one is um, really where I, I go back to the home and educate them on, you know, kind of depending on what their needs are. So let's say the family does have a child with anxiety. We'll delve deeper into that and talk about some things that will, um, you know, help that condition. Um, I basically let them lead me kind of in, in what their needs are and what they'd like to learn more about. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third visit is my little shopping excursion, uh, which has been really fun and is getting, you know, a lot of good feedback because I think, it can be very overwhelming when you're looking at, you know, seven different boxes of whatever and you don't have any clue what to look for. Yeah. So true. Yeah. I, I, um, I really like the, the, the title of Nutrition Navigator. It's unique, Jill. Oh, thank you. Well, I will admit to you that I actually broke down and hired a copywriter. Um, that was kind of a hard decision for me because I thought, you know, I can do this by myself, but, um, that is, we'll, we'll talk in a little bit about website design and such. And I, I think it, it made for a much more effective website. And she is amazing. Um, and she came up with those clever names. Right. So, 
Um, so then my other package is actually kind of two. You either you you pick a, a five or a seven session bundle, and then they mix and match kind of whatever they want from from anything that I offer. So I just let them lead me and I just sort of tick off, you know, how many sessions they've had. And um, so that's been pretty cool too. And they're clear about what they want and services. You know, once you explain what your services have, they're clear of the direction they think that they, uh, that they yeah, want they to go actually, they guide with. Yes, I would say so. But I also can obviously lead them. I often, you know, know what they need. So to be honest, it's been more frequently me saying, let's do this next time. How does that sound? Oh, that, that sounds great. Yeah. Go. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. So then um, I was going to show you. So this is actually a screenshot of my website. So this shows you how it's laid out. That's that first package we talked about. That's the, the three set sessions. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of explain, you know, each one. And then below, you can't see there's a buy now button that just goes right into PayPal. And then they, they buy it. And that, that comes to me. And then I know to contact them to set up their first appointment. Um, and then this is the, the choose your own adventure. So it kind of lists, you know, what they get for their, um, you know, for each bundle. And um, you can see the, the buy now, pay, pay now button, and, and that's how that works. Does it take much uh, discussion about these bundles to get somebody to think this is a great deal? Actually, one thing that I didn't mention um, that, that is helpful is I actually have a tab interspersed on all of my different web pages that is a f um they basically can book right online for a free um 15 minute call and so that's when we'll go through kind of what their needs are and what i think might be helpful and um how many sessions we think they might need like my first client actually booked the seven session bundle which shocked me um but they had an adult child with anxiety and knew that they wanted the whole family to have some time with me so I did four sessions with the parents and three sessions with the daughter. So she knew right away that she wanted the bigger package. Um, but I think people kind of tend to go toward, you know, the three or the five initially because they don't know for sure how much they need. If that makes right. sense? Sure. What they need and what they're actually going to get for it. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you say this, but, you know, what, what they feel like they get for it. Just another yes, matter, for right? sure. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, you've talked about your website and, and the work that you've done with a consultant. So, you know, branding is a big thing right now. What do you think? Do you think it's important? I do. Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I do. I think it's critical, really. Um, so you can see my logo um, and you saw a little bit about my, you know, a little bit about my website. Um, I, I think there are so many vehicles now to do. Uh, they There are a lot of websites, I guess you would call them, that make it very easy to make your own website. Um, and I don't think it's all that hard to make a pretty website, but I think making an effective one is actually harder than it appears. Um, so I think it's worth hiring a professional. Um, you know, I actually started to do my own website and then realized that it just wasn't working for me. <laughs> um, so I obviously mentioned earlier that I, you know, was able to work with a professional and lucky me, she happens to be one of my best friends. And, you know, what I'm doing is her niche. So we actually set up a trade. Um, we met once a week and alternated, you know, one week we would work on nutrition for her and the next week we would work on my website. Uh, and it was really fun for me to be that involved in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned a ton. Um, and I know that's not the scenario for most people. If they hired a professional, they wouldn't get to sit next to them and, and watch. <laughs> um, but you can absolutely save money or not, not spend any money by setting up a trade. I know a lot of professionals are willing to do that. And yes. I personally think it's worth finding someone that would be willing to do a trade if you're not able to afford to pay for that. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll talk in a, in a minute about why um, I think it's so important. But I learned so much from her. And she, you know, she's not a business consultant. She's a web designer. But she knew so many tips and tricks that in a million years I never would have figured out. Hmm. And, and, and that's what's made my website more effective. 
um, it would have been pretty before, but nobody would have seen it. <laughs> and that that's not going to get me anywhere. No, but the you know doing a trade, you're you're, you're true. It's it's true. There there's a, a lot of um, opportunity for that, and what they gain from that is your services that they're 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 needing, and they get your word of mouth. You you are you are driving business back to this woman, I bet, because yes. of just what you have to say and how pleased you are with it. Yes, that's a good point for sure. That is, ab and I have a big mouth. <laughs> so I, I tell everybody. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> website development, <laughs> you know, it's like, let's continue with website developer and uh, the time you spent working with her and anything else you have to say on that? Yes. So, um, you know, we've talked about, you know, having an effective website, duh, it's obviously critical. Um, so, to, so, so to make an effective website, um, obviously it needs to be easy to navigate and simple and clean. Um, you know, a limited number of pages. Um, I, these are the, the pages that I have home about services, resources, and contact. Um, because anything more than that, you're going to draw them away from your call to action, which is making an appointment with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then testimonials are really helpful and they can be interspersed. You know, I have like one on each page. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, in working with the copywriter as well, they both said you really want to make your website personal. Mine is a little bit less personal in that I don't have pictures, a lot of pictures of myself. I didn't do a photo shoot of me, let's say, working with clients. Mm -hmm. That would be something that maybe I might do in the future. So I've used you know, photos of children, um, you know, to, to hopefully make a parent that's looking at my website feel like they could see their family in that scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, really making it as personal as you can, um, avoiding, you know, intimidating language um, that's going to put them off or make them think you're trying to be, you know, sound smarter than you are or whatever. Um, and then, you know, really you want your website to draw them in. Uh, so you want to uh, right up front, and this goes back to having a niche or a specialty. You want to identify their problem, tell them how you can help them, show them why they should work with you, and that's where testimonials are really helpful. And then you want to foster their trust, and that's going to get them to make that call or set up that appointment. Call to action. There it is. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll actually show you. Um, so this is my homepage. Um, and actually, the, the buttons at the top have changed a bit. The schedule of free call is now contact, and then I have a resources tab. So the contact tab is actually furthest to the right, because in their brain, they're going to see that and, you know, make the call or, you know, set up the appointment before they get sidetracked on shopping, hopefully. Because <laughs> um, that's the ultimate, you know, what, what I want them to do ultimately is... Um, is, you know, make that phone, that 15 minute freebie phone call, mm -hmm. because then hopefully I will, um, you know, show them how I can help and that I care and, and they'll be hopefully motivated to make an appointment. So about the 15 minute phone call, are you able to accomplish everything that you're saying you share here and, and information that you gather in that time frame? Yes, I have found I actually don't always need that much time. And having said that, there are times that I've spent more like a half an hour, kind of depending. Um, you know, sometimes I give more advice um, if they're asking than I probably should. Yeah. But I'm doing that because I do care. I want to help them. And I do want them to know that I'm willing to kind of do whatever they need to, to, to help them with their issue. It's a careful balance, you know, to it be is. able to, to offer something of value at the time, but not give your services away, not undermine is, yourself. It's absolutely, and it, it's a learning process, actually. Like, I, I still, I have to check myself um, because I'm naturally the type that I love giving my opinion, <laughs> but also I want to help everybody. And, uh, you know, I, I do need to remember that th this is my business. So, you know, if, if, if I need to give them more than a quick snippet, I need to ask them to make an appointment. Yeah. Sometimes that's hard, but yeah. It's reality. It is. Yeah. So let's move on if you're ready to to talking a little bit more about how you utilize the internet and certainly social media to market your business. 
There yeah, you go. So this is what I learned from, um, as I mentioned, my graphic artist, you know, she, th this is why this page is probably why I think it is worth hiring someone because I never would have known to do this before. Um, so uh, a lead capture PDF, I had never heard what I had never heard that term before. So basically you're giving them something they want or need in exchange for their email address. So you're building up your email list. So in my case, I offer potential clients a PDF explaining the most common nutrient deficiencies in kids and teens, which you, you saw earlier from my, my thesis. And then um, it includes a list of foods that are a rich source in these nutrients. Mm -hmm. So this is what it looks like. So you'll see on the left, um, this box is actually at the bottom of each page. It's not one of those annoying pop-ups that make me crazy. Um, it's just gently at the bottom of each screen. So they type in their name and email address. And then you'll see over on the right, this is a, a PDF that they get delivered to their email box. And that is, um, you know, basically their free gift, if you will. Um, it's beautifully done. It's beautifully done, and, and, and it's a very good free gift. Oh, good. I'm glad you think so. Absolutely. It's usable. I mean, it's tangible yes. information right away. And, I, you know, I think in, in the back side of the, this profession, we call it the give to get. <laughs> yes. Give you so, something, to, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. I love it. Um, so that then this this feeds right into the second bullet point where you then utilize what's called a drip campaign. Again, I had never heard of that either. <laughs> um, so that is when your email list that you've now built up receives uh, a series of emails that's really intended to draw them in to make an appointment with you. So you're going to give them some recipes maybe. Um, show them uh, you who you are um, so they feel like they know you and can trust you and you you really want to show them that you do care that you're not just a, a huge business trying to churn these people through your business um, and then you know that will hopefully draw them in to make an appointment with you um, and um, so you'll see MailChimp, Constant Contact, MailerLite, those are some of the companies that you can use. So basically what they do is, is hold your email address list and then automatically, the way I have mine set up, for example, every three days, they're gonna get one of, um, eventually they will get five spread over two weeks. They'll get you know one email, let's say the first one is an introductory, the second one is I'm giving them the recipe. The third one is a testimonial from one of my clients. Um, and then the, they will also have your email addresses if you ever want to just do a blog post. And it automatically then sends out to everybody that you've, you know, all of the email list or email addresses that you've accumulated. It will automatically send that blog post out to those people. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sure does. Are you going to do a blog? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I I think I'm doing a blog. I don't know if it, basically I just send out emails every now and then, um, you know, kind of depending on what jumps into my brain at the time, like what maybe what I'm dealing with in my own health life um, or, you know, March is natu National Nutrition Month. So I just did an email that went out on the first or the second and, and I just kind of talked about some things. So I haven't formally turned that into a blog and linked it to my website yet, but that is on my list of things to do with my um, with my my web designer. So sure. so I, I think it's a blog, but technically I don't know if is that is that considered a blog? <laughs> well, it's a start of a blog. That's an email. Okay. But <laughs> blog yeah. is going to be you know located on your website, and and people are going to go to your website. It's, it's like okay. this is a blog I follow. I want to come here to read it. But it's very effective what you're doing because through email you're reaching people directly, assuming they open their email, and then right. they go to your website and see everything else that you have to offer. And you know what's really cool is I'm actually using MailerLite just because that's what my friend thought I should use, uh, my designer friend. She thought it was the easiest. Um, but um, they make it very easy. They will tell you percentage of people that have opened um, and how, how many new um, emails you have gotten and how many people have um, unsubscribed 
they keep yeah. track of all that for you, which makes it really easy to kind of it's know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you can see which, what people tended to open more of, like, oh, they liked the humorous one more than the recipe. Mm -hmm. um, so that you know what to do more of later, which is really kind of cool. Okay. Um, and then so social media, um, I'm using social media to the degree that I feel comfortable. Um, I, it can be all consuming and kind of stressful. Like it can suck so much time out of your day. Um, so I'm really only willing to do as much as I enjoy it. So I am not on Facebook. I'm probably the only person. I realize that I'm limiting myself, but I'm okay with that. Um, but on the contrary, I love Instagram and I love writing these blog emails, if you will. So that's where I am devoting my time right now. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I'm feeling okay about it. So, yeah. No, do what you love. And exactly. it's, you know, yeah. People go to Instagram too, and it's, it's a whole different uh, a medium, really, to me. There's less words, there's, there's more traffic, there's more pictures. It's, it's, it's cleaner. Yes, for sure. All right. Um, go in your practice. Let's talk about that. How, how, a little bit more about how you've built up your practice and your business so far? Yeah. So the first thing I did after going live is I sent an email announcement to basically all of my contacts. Um, and I did social media posts, um, really just Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh, so my personal Instagram page, I posted to for a while asking people to follow my professional Instagram page. Um, and, you know, I overlap for a while and then have now just transitioned to only pretty much posting nutrition stuff on my um, professional Instagram account. Um, so that's made it a, a little bit easier to only be dealing with it in one spot. Um, and then, you know, soliciting referrals from friends, not soliciting, you know, in an uncomfortable way, but just letting them know that I'm open for business and would love and appreciate if they have any friends that they that I they think I could help, I would love for them to pass my name and number along. Just right. Um, and then I've um, formed some partnerships, relationships with some local practitioners. I plan to do um, a lot more of this in the future. Um, to be honest, I haven't spent a lot of time on it. I'm in the ramping up stage right now, but I actually used to be a nanny. Um, and the most recent family I nannied for, I actually left them to finish my school um, at, at Hawthorne. Uh, they own um, a pediatric psych practice. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> so um, they refer uh, their patients to me. And um, there's a very well-respected pediatric uh, uh, physician here in the Portland area that's written books um, on vaccines and things like that. He's very holistic in nature. He is an MD. Um, so I have my name in there uh, because their patients really would be the type of client I would um, like to attract because they're holistic in nature, their mindset. Um, and then I have a naturopath and a chiropractor that I work closely with. Um, and we pass, uh, you know, we refer uh, people back and forth to each other. Um, and then I will be beating the streets and going like, I think I probably will go to all pediatricians in the area, um, other pediatric psych practices and things like that, where I think it would be a target rich environment, um, get my business cards out there, get my face in front of them if they'll let me and hopefully build even more in the future. Tell, tell everybody when you graduated, Jill. I graduated in this past May. I, I just have to say how amazing it is, all you've done so far, and oh. just beautiful plans for moving forward. Just bravo. Oh, you're so sweet. I, I really appreciate that because I really was thinking recently that it's been, I feel like, almost a year, and I started thinking, oh, my gosh, I should be busier. But it really does take a while. Mm -hmm. All right. It takes a while. So I think we could talk about maybe some challenges that you might have faced along yes. the way and and what, yes. what are your future plans and goals too yeah so um i i would say building my i mean this is kind of funny and this feeds into our uh, american way of looking at the world 
um, building my social media presence has been really slow. You know, I look at my Instagram, I'm like, oh my gosh, I had three new followers, but then one person unfollowed me. Why? You know, why is it taking so long? I, I really was um, surprised that it didn't just sort of snowball more quickly. Um, so anyway, uh, that, that was surprising to me. Um, and then sales and marketing it does not, not come that easily to me. Um, I've gotten a lot of really good advice. Um, but my brain doesn't naturally think that way, which is probably why I love the business courts so much um, because it, it taught me so much um, because I really think inside the box and I don't like to sell myself, which is probably common for a lot of people. The selling yourself is a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of an evolving process for me. Um, and then I have found that kids and teens are not always very compliant. They want to do what their friends are doing. Uh, so that is really been, it's been very difficult for me because if they are not going to take my advice, I A, feel like I'm beating my head against the wall and B, they're not going to be successful and then they're not going to refer me because I'm not able to, you know, incite change in their life. Mm -hmm. So so that's a struggle. Um, and I, I'm planning on learning more about that, you know, continuing education. Um, well, because your psychology really, background will help you with that too, Jill. Exactly. Yes, I hope so. But I definitely need to do some more reading for sure. Um, and then, you know, what do I call myself? It's funny. I mean, you, you know, I'm an anxious person. So I stressed about this. Like, there, there's not one governing board, right? So you graduate from this program and, and everyone tells you, you should be called this, that, or the other. Well, in Oregon, there's no, there, there are no regulations, which is actually nice because I think I can call myself whatever I want. Um, but I struggled with w what to land on. And I landed on holistic nutritionist because it was the most straightforward and it, it, you know, it, it sounds like what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so Paula, you helped me learn that that's okay since there are no regulations. Um, I'm able to do that. And so that's, that's kind of nice. So I urge, uh, you know, listeners to look into what your state um, says you can and can't do. And then that's going to help help lead you with what you're going to end up. After Absolutely. Graduation. Absolutely. Yeah. But holistic nutrition totally fits into your scope of practice. And yes, and 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 honors and, you know, and certainly use masters, you know, you have masters in science. It's like use that. That's crazy. To say. It, I mean, it, it sounds very it, it adult. Qualifi it, it qualifies you, you know, um, yeah. it, above somebody else who's doing, who's less qualified. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, and then my other um, kind of conundrum that I'm still dealing with is should I become board certified? So, you know, being an overachiever, my answer, my knee jerk answer is yes, of course, but I, I'll be honest, I feel like I'm hemorrhaging money, you know, setting up a business um, after having paid for grad school. So it's, it seems a little bit expensive and, you know, doing the continuing education, I'll be doing that anyway. But, um, you know, you're kind of required to do maybe some that maybe cost a little bit more. Um, and so I just am sort of struggling, like, do I need to do this? Are you asking me? <laughs> well, if you have, if you have, I, I, I do. I, I think, I think it's a fantastic credential to add to your name. Okay. No doubt about it. I, I, I think it stands. You know, you, you have a master's and then you're board certified. So you know, you're in kind of an upper echelon of yeah. uh, of a credentialed professional. Do you have to do it immediately while you're spending this kind of money and time and energy building your business? No, you don't. There's 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 not that kind of a requirement. I'll say that I find that for students that are taking the exam, I think it's easier when you do it soon after you graduate just because the information is all so fresh on your mind and you're you're targeting yourself into your niche into your specialty and may um, not employ all of the body systems and all of the information that you used in the full program right. in this niche. Um, so just a couple things to take into consideration with that. That's a good, very good point, yeah. But I'll say that Hawthorne um, graduates who have sat to the exam have been very successful in, in um, uh, successfully completing and passing the exam. 
and um, and and then garnering uh, clients because of it. Oh, great! I like to hear that. That's awesome. Not surprising, but that's good to hear. And we have a a, a, a closed Facebook group right now for Hawthorne that is you know for students that are prepping for the exam. So that's an ongoing support that I'm part of, and uh, um, something that's offered for people that want to avail themselves of it. Oh, that's great. Awesome. So um, what else? Is there anything else on this in terms of future growth and, and additional offerings that you're thinking about? Well, so we can take the question mark off that first bullet, <laughs> bullet point. <laughs> um, so yeah, so as I mentioned, I'll, I'll want to, you know, continue to grow my business um, with, you know, other, uh, you know, additional relationships. Um, increase my online presence, getting more people to my website and social media followers. Um, and then I would love to do like seminars where I will pick a topic and, um, you know, do whether it's just a three hour session or a couple of sessions spread over a weekend. Um, because I think that makes that would make me more accessible for somebody that doesn't necessarily want or can afford to do a package. Um, they could pay a nominal fee to come to the seminar and then, um, you know, there would be other people that are dealing with whatever they're dealing with. Um, you know, I just, I feel like it would um, increase my visibility as well and I would be able to really reach more people. Yes. Um, and then develop a nutrition program, um, you know, pick a, a topic and, you know, this I struggle with a little bit because um, I there are things I want to do outside of my specialty, like my own health. I'm dealing with some digestive issues, as I mentioned, from all of the antibiotics. And so I'm doing the autoimmune protocol diet right now. I'd love to do a nutrition, nutrition program surrounding this, but I right. need to kind of figure out if that's it's too far outside of the scope of what I'm doing. Um, but I like the concept of a nutrition program. Yes. Um, and then another thing I'm dabbling in, I, I, I have a loose offer to be a corporate nutritionist. I, I just don't know if I want to do that because I don't want to be spread too thin. Um, but that is intriguing to me where I could go into an, um, you know, a company and hold seminars there and then be available to them or to their uh, employees. Um, yeah. If they have an issue, like let's say, an employee's daughter was di diagnosed with a condition, they could call me and I could help walk them through that. That's intriguing to me. Yes. Um, and then my, my ultimate bucket list goal would be to write an educational cookbook. I would just absolutely love to do that. Um, I'm not a chef though, so that it's a little bit scary to me. Um, and then- but it's so needed, it's so needed, so. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I think, um, Yes, if I can certainly offer something that's new, I would I would really love to do that. Um, and then I'm also intrigued by private labeling supplements, um, mm -hmm. maybe doing, you know, a blend of things that are known to help anxiety. Um, so people don't have to take, you know, three supplements, it could just be all in one, that would be kind of cool. Uh, I didn't even know you could do that. But you know, companies like, I can't remember if it's like vital or, you know, yes, they sure. And tell them what you want in it and they'll do it for you. Sure. Um, and then obviously continuing education is, is you know, f forever. Um, yeah. Rightfully so. Lifelong learning, right? it. Lifelong yeah. learning is part of it. You know, I'll just say with the corporate, um, having an offer for to do corporate um, nutrition is potential big money. Good and to know. Once you've <laughs> developed, once you've developed it, then you've got something to to take, and you've got a testimonial from from one, and so sure. it, can, it it can lead you in. But you have to be ready for it, and you've got a number of things happening right now. So <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> um, Jill, you've shared so much. Uh, I can only imagine that people are going to want to find you. So how can we stay connected? What's your web address and your contact info? There it is. There it is. So my web address, um, this actually was advice from my graphic artist that I keep re referencing. Uh, she said, use your name, make it simple. People are going to remember you, not a cute name. I really wanted a cute name. <laughs> so that was hard. Um, 
but you have she, a cute name. Well, oh, well, thank you. I meant a cute, cutesy business name, but thank you. Um, so <laughs> she, um, she said she actually was rebranding. She's rebranded a couple people that had a great business name. And then they said, I want my website to be my name. Uh -huh. So, so that's what I did. Um, and then if anybody is on Instagram and wants to follow, I would absolutely love it. I'm trying to build up as you know. Um, so, uh, and then this is really how we can help each other. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. glad that you put that out with, with the request because listening to all that you've done and developed and you've shared so much of value here, Jill. So by all means, check out Jill's website and follow her, like her. Well, and one thing that might be cool is a, I would love it if you wanted to go to my website and scroll down and, you know, put your email address and your name in, um, it would help me to build my list, but also it would let you see firsthand how the drip campaign works. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yay. Fantastic. Well, Jill, you know, it's just been such a pleasure, Jill. It's just, I, I can just say, I hope that you'll visit us again at Hawthorne and, and, and continue to share with us your good works because you've got a lot, you've got a lot going on. And I can expect just um, beautiful things that you're going to affect in the world around you. So thank you so much. Oh, Paula, thank today. you so much. You're so sweet and you're a delight. I very much enjoyed talking to you. It was really an honor. My honor, too, to showcase you by all means. Thank you. All right, everybody, there's a few things I'm going to ask you to help us spread the word about. One is Hawthorne's accreditation status. Be bold with that and also um, help us spread the word about, and, and come back again for our next All About Alumni and meet here again Wednesday, April 3rd, live with Lori Fozo. She's a graduate from our Nutrition Consultant Clinical Training Program and is on the call today. Thank you, Lori, for joining us. And until then, I think that's it. I just want to wish everybody the best, the best of health and wish you um, all good things and take good care. Bye for now.